Hey, and what's up? This is Jellyfish Spider here, and today I'll be showing you how to build a basic nuclear reactor in Tekkit. So, before I get started, um, I use the Tekkit Wiki, and it is a very good resource, and that is where I learned most of the stuff I use to build this reactor. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, I'm going to drill two little holes in the ground, just like that, and fill them with glowstone. And I'll explain why in a second here. Next thing I'm just going to grab is an energy collector, MK1. It's the cheapest one of the three. And you'll need two of those. A filter, you'll need one of these. A condenser, you'll need one of those. Pneumatic tubing, you'll need as many as you want. Depends on how long you want your cooling system or how far away you want your cooling system from your reactor. Um, a timer. You'll need one, and I'm not going to put it out yet, but I'll show you why I need it in a second here. And ice. Okay, so these are your cooling components. So you're going to place your one and two energy collectors right on top of that glowstone. The reason why I'm using glowstone is because at nighttime there's no sun, so these things can get energy quicker that way. Next thing you're going to need to do is just go back here, place a filter. You should have the big hole aiming where your condenser is going to be, a small one aiming out where your reactor is going to be. So small, big. In here you can go ahead and put ice, get that started. And I'm going to put the timer in here because I don't need it for the moment. Next thing I'm going to do is put three tubing out. I mean you can put as many as you want. You can go, oops. You can go way out there if you want to, but it just creates more lag and stuff. I like to keep mine small and basic at one, two, three blocks. I mean, you could have it less. You could have it one, I guess, but I don't know. I like three. So let me get rid of these. Okay, so now the next part, it's going to look a bit more nuclear. Well, let me grab that. So yeah, it's going to look a bit more nuclear. So you need a reactor chamber and a nuclear reactor. And I'll grab just any block will do for this part because all you have to do is just place one block down and pop reactor on top. And then you just need to put your reactor chambers all around. And what the reactor chambers do is they basically expand the reactor, make it larger. Because if I were just to place one, see how it holds a lot less compared to that. So that is why you put reactor chambers. Generates more heat, more cells, all that good stuff. So that is the reactor. Next thing I'm going to do is turn that off. Get the shutoff system going. So you're going to need a lever, which is right here. And I'm going to get a sign just to remind myself. There you go. Just to remind myself that which is which. And so you put it on by shift clicking, just like that. And up is on, down is off. So on, off. And I'm basically going to put the sign there, just reminding myself, up is on, down is off. And you want to start it out with off, because otherwise it's going to be running. I mean, there's no cells in there, so it's not running, but when you do put cells, you don't want any issues, so just turn it off for now. The next part, or the next stuff you're going to need is the emergency shutoff system. So that consists of a thermal monitor, just like this. You're going to need three redstone, or red alloy wire. I like redstone, it's easier to play with, play around with. And a redstone repeater. And again, you're going to shift click and throw the thermal monitor on. One, two, three redstone, repeater, just like that. And you can have the repeater on any setting that you want. I just prefer to have it on the first setting. For me, I like my reactor at a nice 1000 heat, nice round number. Now you can put it at any number you want. You know, it can go way out here or way down here. Zero, you know, you're not going to get anything. Way out here, it'll blow. So, you know, right in here would be nice. I wouldn't really recommend a little bit more. Like, I guess that will be okay, but like way out here, not very good. So, ah, right in there. And basically what this thing does is it grabs the heat from in here 
and once it gets to that certain temperature, for example, like that, it'll turn red, sending a redstone signal, and it doesn't give a straight signal back into the reactor, so you just have to have it signal around, which shuts it off. Kind of like the same thing with the lever being down. So, I mean, if you're not there to shut it off, it'll automatically shut it off if it overheats. That way, if your cooling system somehow fails, this will make sure it shuts off. Another thing is you're going to need some world anchors. And this is just in case, you know, you're a ways away from here and the cooling effects won't work, but the reactor will still keep going if you're away, so just throw down a world anchor. Maybe throw down another one, just in case. I don't know. You know, just like that. Just to make sure everything's working properly. So the next part we're going to be working on is the electrical system. Some HV cables, and make sure it's four times insulated. I mean, you can go less, but, you know, it may shock you and stuff, so... Go the nice and thick. I'll go about that far. I wish you one more. And I wouldn't recommend using HV cables for long distances because it loses power very quickly. So, so yeah, just make sure your you know power supply, where your power is gonna be stored to, it's not very far from your reactor. Next thing I'd be using is this, which is a high voltage transformer. And basically, it takes the power into those three and sends it out all these into high voltage. That way it doesn't blow things up. So that's a pretty good thing. And the next thing I'm going to need, which can accept high voltage, is an MFSU, or the highest level of bat box. It can store 10 million EU, and it can give output of 512 EU per tick. And there's one tick per second. And just to give you an idea, the reactor can give out 2,040 EU per tick, or EU per second. And it'll transfer it into here. And of course, you can put more bat boxes if you want to all around this, but I'm just going to stick with one just for the basics of this tutorial. So there's your MFSU. Another thing is some glass fiber cable, and this is going to lead to whatever you're going to need next. And glass fiber cable is best for long distances. It's basically, you know, your long distance cable, cable wire. So I'll just put it like that, you know, and this would lead to your, you know, force field generator and stuff like that, which I think I'll make a force field generator next episode. So that'll be something interesting. And it'll be powered by this. So the next part we're going to need to do is to actually fill it. So to fill a nuclear reactor at this design, you're going to need seven stacks of ice, which I can just grab from in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you're going to put them exactly like this at the bottom. You can also put them at the top. You could do like this at the top. Six, seven, which, I don't know, I like to keep mine at the bottom. Oh, it's easier for me to notice the ice. I typically notice the middle of the screen first. So, yes, yeah, seven stacks of ice at the bottom. And what this filter is going to do, oh, speaking of which, put another stack in the filter so it knows what to grab. There you go. And it's going to bring single stacks out, and it's going to put it in here. The stack hasn't been completely used. It's going to keep bouncing back and forth until it gets completely eaten by refilling this, because this ice is going to melt and just kind of, you know, dissipate into thin air. So that's how that works. So now you're going to need to fill it with 47 uranium cells, just like this. Each uranium cell lasts you about 2 hours and 47 minutes of power. And, you know, you're not going to have your reactor on all the time, You're going because it charges very quickly. You know, you're going to charge this all the way. Once it gets low, hit the switch. Once it gets charged again, just keep going like that, unless they have huge power consumption. And at that point, I guess you would have to have it on all the time. So, I mean, this 2 hour and 47 minutes could last you a week. It depends on how how long. And, you know, you can just condense more uranium and stuff, which is about 4,000 EU. You know, 2 per diamond. So, it's not that hard to get uranium. So, once you have your 47 uranium cells, and how you make a cell is you just take 10 and put one here, one here, here, and here in a crafting table. And, you know, you get 16 cells. So, I mean, uranium is not that hard to get. Let me make it day really quickly. So, now that it is filled, you can go ahead and turn it on.
You can hear the sound of it, the crackle. That let that lets you know that it is on. And now look at the power. Slowly generating. And oops, got one thing. Before we get started, should have reminded myself. Shh, nobody knows. Let's quickly throw some ice in there. Cooling system wasn't on, but I guess that'd be a good example of this thing would shut off eventually. But yeah, without you know auto shut off and without any cooling in here just take the ice out and let all 47 sit like that it'll take about less than 10 seconds for this thing to blow up and make a huge crater so you just have to be careful with it so anyway I'm gonna put this timer on 8 seconds and that's what the wiki suggests completely agree with them and so it'll put out a stack of ice every 8 seconds which is about the speed of which this condenser will be working at it's all good now we start the process and see, a stack of ice. Some of it gets eaten, some of it doesn't. Slowly goes down, comes back in, and it gets restacked. There's two stacks, so. And now look at the power. So it regenerates very quickly. See how quick it's already regenerating. It only takes a few minutes, and this is already fully charged. So, it gives off a lot of energy. Like I said, 2,040 EU per tick is a lot. The normal solar panel, just the plain below low voltage solar panel gives off one EU per tick. So this is a has the equivalent of 2040 low or non-voltage solar panels, you know, the low level ones. So anyway, let me turn this off. That is the nuclear reactor tutorial. So this will be the end of the video. Thank you for watching and please subscribe and comment below. Thank you.